Hey everybody, it's Durf, and today we're gonna be checking out DevBlog18. DevBlog, 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 DurfBlog18. All right, so they start things off by saying that they are very dedicated to developing survival mode, there's new updates getting added daily, and that they plan to do some optimization updates later on so that things can run better. Now the optimization update is something that I'm personally very excited for. I definitely have some large and complex creations that I would love to see run a little bit better. Alright, so after the introduction, the first thing that we're talking about is the Haybot. Scraggly looking character, very scrawny and thin. They look like they're going to be some very threatening farm bots indeed. They also kind of look a little bit crazy, like they're not all there, you know? Oh, and this picture at night, it looks amazing. You kind of can't see it, but like there's even more way out in the distance out there. This is getting me excited. The Haybot would be best described as the zombie of farm bots. So the whole time I'm looking at these pictures and I'm thinking this Haybot is looking really cool. I think it's an original idea. I mean it is. It has an original design, sort of. Uh, but then after I read that last line about the zombies, it really made it obvious for me what these Haybots are supposed to be. They're creepers, right? They're like tall, thin enemies that are zombies and they stand on a few legs. Just because one of his legs happens to be a pitchfork doesn't make it not a creeper. Keep in mind that I have not actually played Minecraft, so I don't actually know what creepers are other than that they're zombies and enemies. So yeah, it seems that the Haybot is the scrap mechanic equivalent of a creeper. You know, I won't have a final opinion until I get to actually fight one of these guys in-game. But, uh, well, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Up next we have new survival music. Since the game has a lot of exploration and building, a lot of the music is beautiful, moody, and atmospheric. So here is a preview of some new survival music for when things intensify in survival. There you go, that sounded really nice, I really like that. Although if you ask me, I'm not sure if this is what I would describe as when things intensify. If anything, it does fill me with wonder, almost as if I just discovered a new area. Like if I just walked into an area that has a fresh undiscovered warehouse or something. Just to be clear, I do actually like the music, I just don't think that this is what I would use to describe when things intensify. Like you're actually having a, a spud gun fight with an enemy. This in my opinion, sounds a little bit too relaxed to be a spud gun fight. Alright, up next we have some more pictures of the updated inventory redesign, which I am actually really excited for. I actually really like this new redesign, and we can see some more new things about it. So, in the first picture, uh, I think one of the first things I noticed was the icon and the font. The font in the entire game seems to be changing with this new inventory redesign. I'm not sure how I like the numbers there. I mean, obviously this first square is number one, the second square is number two, and the tenth square is number ten. I think it might look nicer without it, but, you know, at the same time, it's not that big of a deal having the numbers there or not. The hotbar switcher on the side, though, I think actually looks uglier than it does now in the current version. I think a very minimalistic design with three little dots is more than enough. So if you take a quick look over to the right side where it says weight, durability, friction, buoyancy, flammable. First of all, I'm excited for all these features and I can't wait to actually customize these for mod parts. I can't wait to finally play around with some friction in this game finally. Buoyancy is really interesting as well. I'm not sure if we're going to have any air physics. I'm not sure if we're going to have any flight in the game. And I'm not sure if we're going to have any balloon physics. Buoyancy implies that there's going to be water in the game, but I, I'm not sure if there's going to be anything like helium balloons or anything like that, like something that's more buoyant than the air itself. It might be just relevant to water only. So I'm a little bit curious to see how far that one goes. But where it says flammable, you see it says yes. So it implies that it's just a yes or no question. There's no in-between. There's not going to be something that catches fire half as quickly as something that is the speed of flammable yes. But I think it would be cool if we could customize this a little bit more, so that we could actually customize the speed at which things catch fire. Maybe we could create materials like flash paper that burn up instantly. They catch fire very quickly and destroy very quickly. Or maybe we can create materials that catch fire but don't get destroyed. 
like a type of wax block, or maybe they get destroyed very, very slowly over time, but they still stay on fire and catch on fire. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic. I'm actually really excited for the inventory redesign. I just went, uh, just went a little bit off topic with the implications from what I saw. So over here, we have a picture of a chest from the challenge mode. So here we have an example of a person in a challenge moving inventory from the chest to their backpack. I think for the chest, I, I would like to see the title bar maybe instead of being that sort of light beige color, maybe be a dark red so it actually looks like the chest from the challenge parts. And here we have a great preview of the options menu. This is actually really exciting because we're starting to get a more complete idea of what the style of this new redesign is and I think it looks amazing. One feature that I think would be amazing to have it doesn't really have anything to do with survival mode, but I think a lot of people would appreciate it is if you could change the menu highlight color. So instead of going to this options menu and you see everything as highlighted with yellow, maybe you can choose a red color or a green color or a blue color. You know, choose a personal color for your installation of scrap mechanic and then all of your menus are in that color. I think that'd be pretty cool. Finally, we have an updated preview of the mod parts tab. So one of the first things that I notice, obviously, is the user-generated content pack. And there's like a username as well on the side. So I'm not exactly sure what these are. Uh, like, are these mod packs? So is the user-generated content pack, is that going to be like the mod pack? And then the next one underneath, user-generated content pack, is that the mod pack beta? Or the mod pack polygons? Like, are these, are these content packs actual full mods on the workshop? I'm not sure about that. And it actually raises some interesting implications about the future of mod support. For example, what if a user-generated content pack is a subset of parts inside a mod pack? I'm not exactly sure, but this second option doesn't seem that likely to me. It seems rather redundant, actually. Now, a third option might be that mod support for Scrap Mechanic is going to be updated entirely. Again, this is just speculation. I don't actually think that anything is going to change with mod support. Where instead of uploading mod packs, like the mod pack and the mod pack beta and the mod pack polygons, I think there might be a different way of going about it where in mod makers upload individual parts. But the point is then, with all of these individual parts uploaded into this huge central database, then everyone in the Steam Workshop can design their ideal mod pack. Their ideal pack of parts. So I think that's a third option for what user-generated content pack could be. Again, I don't exactly think that that possibility is very likely compared to the first one, but I do think it's worth discussing these ideas during the development of Scrap Mechanic. So one last thing then that I want to point out uh, about this mod parts tab is the emphasis on the username listed on the user-generated content pack. Over the examples that I gave, the user-generated content pack will either be made by the mod maker themselves or will be made by some random person on the workshop. Is the username going to be the person who made the content pack or is the username going to be the person who made the mod parts? The fact that they have username on this page at all, I find very interesting. It's like the developers are putting an emphasis on credit. If user-generated content packs was just like the mod pack, then wouldn't username say derf? Which, you know, I don't exactly care if my name is in the game like that or not, but it would be unfair to the other people that work on the mod pack, wouldn't it? So I'm not sure if it's going to be the name of the person who made the mod parts. I'm thinking it might actually be this generated content pack thing. I think it might actually be a new kind of mod support. Mixing and matching people design their own mod packs. Huh. Anyway, moving right along, we see pictures of a new multi-tool, which to me is disgusting. Oh my god. They have something that looks like a potato peeler, a can opener, a cork screw, a spork, pliers, and a toothbrush, all on the same utensil. This mechanic puts this tool on random rocks and trees, on their oily card wheel creation thing, and inside their mouth. Gross. So, normally you want to go around collecting resources and you have to refine them to actually be able to build with those resources later on. So you're going to have a refining station where you refine resources, but this multi-tool is a handheld version of a refining station. Alright, now here we have a work in progress. It does say work in progress, but we have a very cool picture of a crash-landed spaceship. Oh, that's so cool though. You can see all the, the, uh, the burnt trees that are bent over and the bark has been stripped off the tree trunk. Looks very cool. All right, so here we have some pictures of what looks to be the inside of the maintenance ship. So on the left here, we have what looks to be the ship's bathroom. On the right, it looks like uh, 
ship's sleeping quarters. Maybe some storage or food, I don't know. Yeah, this looks like uh, entertainment over here with a screen and like cassette tapes. Now this on the left, after having just said cassette tapes, makes me think that's what this is. But no, it's obviously not. Based on all of these images here, like you can see this one here is, I, I, I wanna say empty, but then these other ones over here, they have more red in them. And then this one looks like it's filling up with even more red. So maybe it's like, um, yeah, based on this next photo here, it looks to be like the ship's reactor or something, like a power source. Uh, all of this filling up with red, it's like uh, overloading, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, we have before and after the crash. All right, and here we have an awesome photo of blueberries. So many, it, it, wait, are they blueberries? I don't know, I can, I can only tell that they're blue and that there are mounds of blue. Crates with loot. Scattered around the map, mechanics will find these smashable crates. We are still not sure who scattered them around the planet. They might have fallen from a cargo ship. It's still a mystery to be resolved. However, they do contain some good items at times, so they are totally worth to smash and have a look inside. Who knows, you could be lucky. All right, here we have what looks to be a picture of a microwave robot, chef bot, Food bot, meal bot, Omnom bot 5000. Oh, it says cook bot right on the image. This master chef will take your ingredients and make the most delicious dishes. Some are even so good that they can revive a fallen mechanic in multiplayer, but it will cost you some adventuring and harvesting to help the cook bot put it all together. Let's close it off with some smaller but fun random things that you might enjoy. And here we have an animated gif of a one versus one battle between a toad bot head with legs and a farmer. We also did some updates to our engine and added a nice translucency when the sun hits the trees and bushes. And here we see that in this photo and I think it does look really nice. Now this is something that I would say is not really important at all. I mean, I'm not mad that they're adding this, but uh, I, like, we definitely don't need this. <laughs> this is something that most players are never going to notice. This, in particular, could have been added to the game after people have already been playing survival mode for like a year. Players are not going to care if this is in the game or not in the game at all. And then finally, uh, also, more work has been done on the dynamic lights and shadow casting. Here is an updated GIF. I don't have too much to comment on this GIF itself, but we are getting a uh, significant preview of the nighttime in survival mode. So this looks a little bit like the night mod that I made for version 0.3, just in general terms like the lighting of the world and how dark it looks. In a specific section of the GIF, I'm going to pause the video so that you guys can really take a good look at it. You'll be able to see the background. There is actually no night sky. There's no stars in the sky. It's not even dark blue. It's still kind of like bright blue. It, it kind of reminds me of like the nighttime in Fortnite. But it seems like survival mode is going to be going for a different sort of feel. You don't want to be able to see all the way across the map. You actually want farm bots to be able to sneak up on you. So I think visibility is definitely going to be very different for survival mode's nighttime relative to what you guys know as the night mod. I'm a little bit upset though that I'm not seeing stars in the night sky. They're not exactly trying to show us the night sky, so maybe they're still working on that. I don't know. But, uh, you know, besides that, like, it's there's not really a whole lot to say. I mean, it's, it's, it's nighttime. Nighttime is nighttime. I'm kind of excited. I can't wait to play it. And lastly, we want to say a big thanks to all the amazing support and patience from you mechanics. We are speeding the survival development up as much as we can without compromising on quality. We hope you agree that it's the right decision. We will be back soon with more news. Okay. So then, you know, the only point that I have to say about that is if you're actually speeding up development, then you can cut back on things that players, like, might not care so much about, like this. Whether or not the leaves are glowing on a bush, it's not going to change how you play survival mode. So that's what I mean by function before fashion. So there was a lot of cool things shown in this dev blog. I'm really excited for the hay bots. I'm kind of curious, is the hay bot going to be one of the easier bots to deal with, or is it going to be one of the more difficult ones? But anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I'm super excited about DevBlog18. Why don't you guys let me know down in the comments below what you're most excited about in DevBlog18. If you're into the Haybots, maybe the menu redesign, maybe you like the multi-tool, or maybe just something else you want to let me know about, go ahead and slap those down in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!
Trời 